This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Using a vitrector to perform a poster capsurexis in a compromised eye. Let's find out how it is done. She is a middle-aged lady who presented with severe pain and redness and vomiting for the last 8 days and uh, Obviously, she had a lens-induced glaucoma of the phacolytic variant. The pressures were extremely high and the cornea was very steamy and the cataract was not visible at all. And also, the antechamber was already filled with the lens particle. So, the visibility was very poor and after a couple of days of steroids and anti-glaucoma medications, posting this case for surgery and this is how the eye looks after intravenous mannitol on the table. So I am anticipating difficult surgery in this patient. I am not sure about the status of the nucleus and the density of it because the visibility is so bad. It looks like the antechamber is filled with the lens particle and I uh, will get a hang of how the capsule is, how the zonules are and what is the density of the nucleus only once I enter into the eye. So the, as the side ports are being made, uh, these are things which are running through in my head. Surgery is now currently being done under surface anesthesia itself, topical drop support and the patient seems to be reasonably comfortable. Intracamel lignocaine is used under the air bubble followed by staining of the under capsule with trepan blue. As the dye is being irrigated out, I am also hoping that all the lens particle which would have diffused out of the capsule bag in the antechamber would also be irrigated out and so that the visualization would be much better. Dispersive OVD is used in the antechamber to deepen it. A 2.8 mm sclerocorneal incision is being made. Now you can see that the scleral incision is about 1 mm posterior to the limbus. Let me pause for a moment and let you know my thinking behind this incision. I am anticipating a difficult surgery. In the event of an intraoperative complication wherein I could lose the bag, I would want to use the same incision to insert an iris clip lens which is a PMMA lens and the incision has to be bigger. So a scleral incision is always going to be safer and that was the thought process behind deciding the sclerocorneal incision. The anterior capsule is punctured with a bent 26 number needle. There is a little aggress of cortex out and I thought I could manage this and I switched to forceps. I am trying to grasp the flap and the visibility has got worse. So I abandon the urexis for the moment come out and irrigate gently in the vicinity of the bag to flush out all the liquefied cortex just to ensure that I see well. As I am irrigating out, I realize that there is no nucleus and there is a small tiny, probably this is the endonucleus which is just expressed out of the bag. So the entire bag, the cataract is almost absorbed and only liquefied cortex is there. That was the impression I got. I am going back with my forceps and trying to grasp the flap. Some of the visibility is extremely poor. I am unable to see very well but eventually I get hold of this flap and I am trying to create a rexus. As the rexus is being done, I am very watchful and trying to find out if I can see any folds on the anticapsule. This could be suggesting of an significantly weak zonules. On the contrary, the tearing was reasonably good and there were lack of any visible folds near the cutting edge of the flap, suggesting that the zonular health seems to be alright. Eventually, I think well-centered and appropriately sized rexus could be achieved, even though the visualization was not great. This looks like a tiny endonucleus and is just disappearing under the fornices of the bag and just come out and depress the main wound and then this again looks like the mini endonucleus and it just gets flushed out. Well, there's a bigger problem here. Although the, there's not significant cortex within the bag, but there's a significant cortex which has percolated behind the poster capsule into the burger space. And this is a common situation which we find in these lens particle glaucomas. In long-standing cases, the lens matter finds its way both through the anticapsule as well as the poster capsule. Now, there is a lack of the red glow which is very evident here. The obvious reason is that the liquefied cortex has escaped or diffused across the poster capsule into the burger space. Now, in this situation, I've got two options. One to leave it just like that, implant the lens and allow the nature to take care of it. It's eventually going to get absorbed, but it's going to take at least four to six 
weeks or a few months before it gets absorbed and there's also a risk of possible low grade inflammation for certain duration of time so my priority or my approach is different i would like to deal with the situation in this setting itself there would be two options to deal with this you can deal with doing going to the past plan approach but in this situation i prefer to do posterior capsular opening and then through the opening go into the burger space and do a limited anterior vitrectomy to clear off all the cortex and lens matter Now moving on to performing a posterior capsular excess in this eye the best way always is to perforate with a needle and then use a forceps to do it but there are a couple of challenges for using that technique number 1 the zonules and the capsule is not very healthy so i am not sure whether the tear which i am going to get is going to be very controlled the second issue is the visualization is not great So in such a situation my preferred technique is always to use vitrector as a tool to perform the posterior capsular excess these are the settings which i'm going to use to engage the capsule and cut it i'm going to use the ia cut mode that is the irrigation aspiration and then cut mode the idea is i want to engage the capsule first with low vacuum and then start cutting at it the vitrector is introduced with its bevel facing posteriorly towards the posterior capsule As the foot pedal is pressed the irrigation and then the vacuum is set in I'm going to engage the capsule and then the cutting is begun the sudden appearance of the red glow is indicative that the perforation of the posterior capsule is successful and the underlying cortex was absorbed or displaced so that suggests that we have an opening but the critical technical aspect now is to ensure that the posterior capsular opening does not enlarge suddenly or extend towards the equator the goal is to keep it small circular and central at this point the size of the posterior capsular excess is very well visualized as the red glow is significantly better the vitrector goes through the posterior capsular opening and is placed slightly at a lower level under the posterior capsule with its bevel facing down and the uh, limited anterior vitrectomy is being performed the surrounding vitreous along with the lens matter which had percolated is getting cut and then absorbed point to note here is that as soon as the vitrectomy is begun the settings are again reverted back to the classical irrigation cut and aspiration mode point to note that the ia cut mode that's irrigation aspiration cut mode was used only to engage the capsule and perform the posterior capsular excess the vitrector is held steady at the centrally to clear off all the surrounding uh, vitreous along with the lens material the vitrector is now brought a little bit anterior above the level of the posterior capsular excess and i am on the lookout for any vitreous fibers which are prolapsed anteriorly i am reasonably satisfied with the removal of the lens matter in the burger space the the red glow is excellent and now is the time to plant the lens but before doing that i'd just like to ensure that the posterior capsular edge is not in the visual axis so i'm just trying to enlarge the posterior capsular anatomy a little bit so that the visual axis remains clear I'm using the regular irrigation cut and aspiration mode. The cut rate is very high, it's around is set at 4000 and gently the posterior capsular excess edge is enlarged. The situation now has been dramatically different from what I had anticipated in the beginning. My original plan was to use a multi-piece lens. Now since I have an opportunity to place the lens in the bag, I thought that the single piece lens would be much more easier to implant in the bag and also gentler and I would have a lesser chance of the posterior capsular excess opening up. So that's the reason I aborted the idea of a multi-piece lens and get got an appropriately powered single piece hydrophobic lens and I'm, the bag is filled with uh, cohesive OVD so that I have enough space As I'm trying to introduce the cartridge through the wound you can see that the, the severe corneal folds it's because the eye is very soft and post vitrectomized eye it's difficult to maneuver simply because the eye will be too soft nevertheless I could ensure that the lens was gently maneuvered into the bag In post vitrectomized eye these are some of the challenges uh, to deal with the soft eye whenever we have a soft eye difficult to manage things in that chamber and the presence of corneal folds also impairs visualization I needed to be absolutely sure that the haptic had gone under the capsule and above the posterior capsule not beneath the posterior capsular opening thankfully it has landed in the right space The proximal haptic is then gently maneuvered into the bag. 
in these situations when the bag is loose and we have a soft tie it's difficult to dial the lens in so this is a technique which i found useful that is using the sinski hook to fold the haptic and introduce it under the anti capsule time to remove some of the ovd and the blood which has entered into the anti chamber and also some of it has gone behind the lens in a vitrectomized eye whenever we want to enter it's always mandatory that the bottle height has to be kept very low i have kept the bottle height at 30 cm as i'm entering into it because if we go in with a very high infusion pressure sometimes the chamber suddenly deepens and there is every risk that the posterior capsule opening can enlarge and the lens can drop down so going in with a very low bottle height is extremely important and once the aspiration kicks in gradually you can increase the bottle height the vitrector is introduced behind the lens and the viscoelastic in some of the blood which had entered down is cleared off in a couple of minutes once all the ovd is taken care of the lens is recentered and i'm going to use diluted tramsinone acetate just to confirm that there is no vitreous fibril remaining this tramsinone acetate also helps in controlling the inflammation in the early post op period The lens looks to be well centered time to close before removing the hand piece the side ports are hydrated to ensure that the chamber is maintained that's it the case is done and these are the first day pictures the pressure on the first post op day was still 25 the cornea is steamy the patient is continued with anti glaucoma medications and 3 days later this is how the eye looks patient is doing fine to summarize a couple of things which uh, we can learn from this is there's always possibility that the lens matter can percolate behind the posterior capsule into the burger space and vitreous cavity and it can be dealt in the same setting using the vitrector to perform the posterior capsule rexus can be helpful in such situations where the red glow is absent visualization is compromised and also when we're dealing with a bag which is not so healthy in this case if i had a second chance maybe i would have considered putting in the lens first and then performing the posterior capsule rexus with the vitrector and then the vitrectomy but advantage of doing so would be that implanting the lens and positioning it would not be an issue because as we saw in maneuvering the lens through a soft eye is challenging so putting the lens first and then doing vitrectomy would have probably avoided this difficulty uh, that was it thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful